to the first in my series of Bunked Reviews. That's right, I'm finally getting to the subject I've been waiting to. And these are going to be like four vlogs, then the final rant, pretty much. I want to review four episodes of the show to show you exactly how it fails, and then we'll do a recap. And what Disney can learn from this. And this will happen over the next month. Come to you Fridays at four, starting today. Um, and so here's the story. If this episode's to go by, Bunk is the worst show of all time. I didn't laugh once. They have a too large of a cast, and much, much more. So let me explain this though. Of all the shows Disney had in their arsenal, they had to spin off Jesse. Now, for most people, this is an absolute disaster. Jesse is the worst Disney show out there currently, probably. Um, however, I think Best Friends Whenever and this will, will give it a run for its money. Yep, I'll be doing that show after Bunked in this method. And so... What was the point of Bunked again? Because you decided to send the main cast of a show that not many people like to Maine for a summer camp thing. And lately I have been watching a bit of Salute Your Shorts, an older Nickelodeon 90s show that is actually pretty good. I, and that's the only other show I know with this camp pre preference. So... But what does Bunk do differently than Salute Your Shorts? Salute Your Shorts isn't really that memorable, but it was good nonetheless. I kind of like the setup. I like some of the characters. It had, it had a slightly decent theme song. So, yeah. On the other hand, Bunk, I haven't seen the theme song yet, and I'll get to that in the second vlog next week. But this is what Bunk has. Annoying characters. Adult jokes shoehorned in that don't even work, not a single laugh, plots that revolve for scenes that last a minute, and nothing happens. You had to take us away from the main plot for that. That's a failure tactic. And many more things. So, so they bring Emma, Robbie, and... Missouri to a camp in Maine, Camp Kiwaka, and so the, it's just those three for veteran actors, however they do decide to bring one more actress on board, um, Freddie's mom from iCarly, I think is like Mindy Sterling, I really, really like this actress, she played Lynn Beifong in Korra, the greatest show of all time in my opinion, but so, they decided to bring her along for a camp counselor. She, she captures none of the things that she was ever able to do in iCarly. That's that. So, now that we've got our characters in the... Then we have her daughter, who's going to have an, a rivalry with Emma, because of a boyfriend, and typical Disney. However, Disney shows usually wait for the... Romantic plots to start partway through the show, or the majority through, and this is the reason when I was younger, I hate, I wasn't a big fan of later seasons of Disney shows, the exception of Wizards of Riverly Place, which was a great, great Disney show. I mean, I think it might be one of my favorites there, and it's a review coming. Alex vs. Alex is any kind of a live-action special done right. But... So, basically, we get rivalries. Yep. They're starting with romance right off the boat. And it's kind of unsettling. You have to establish a cast. Yes, I get that Emma was established in a previous show, but picture this. What if a kid just came to Disney for the very first time, turned on the channel, hadn't seen any previous shows, and saw this show, they wouldn't get a single thing that's going on. They would, or kids would get it, but any on older than 
um, 13 probably wouldn't care. So next, you have to bring in two more kids to balance it out. Of course, the older series had four kids, and now they're going to five kid actors. Bringing in an overachieving girl who is extremely annoying because of her parents pretty much doing child abuse to her to make her behave. They acknowledge this, but it does not make the fact better. And, like, another kid who's a foreign too, why does the show love all these foreign kids? Okay, I am sorry, I just have to get out of the way. They show way too many foreign characters. And I'm not saying that's bad, it's just... And this, um, they have a fat boy who, let's just get this right out of the way, he's potty humor galore. I mean, seriously, if you are to do this, you cannot have a potty humor character. These are some of the most annoying characters I've ever encountered in live action shows. What else do we have to bring into this? I might have mentioned it already, but Emma has also has a counterpart. Yes, they double the kid cast pretty much. And then give Emma four versions in this in her teen group, while the others have more like four themselves. They expand the cast to, four, to eight kids and one adult. Wanna know why, why this fails? I can promise you, I can promise you, the cast that they're going to be doing is going to get very, very stale very, very quickly. Wanna know why? They're not going to develop any of these characters. They're Disney sitcoms. They have a one-note personality, and that's all, pretty much. In fact, every single one of them you could replace with a previous Disney character. Now, I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do that in the analysis, but... So, yeah. <sighs> what else are we up against? <laughs> Let me watch more. Um, oh, yeah. So, as I was saying, Emily gets three new characters in her category. and to be totally honest, they aren't as unbearable as some of the kid characters. First of all, that annoying rival she has, who... Terrible. Could be replaced by, like, that person Lexi from Ant Farm. Who's still te a terrible character, nonetheless. Then there's the boyfriend, who actually is kind of bearable. And, don't get me wrong. He is not a good character in the slightest, but he's at least better than some of the other characters they brought on to this show. And the third character rounding out our lineup tonight is a previous assistant. Now, this is where the show goes a little overboard. It's time to talk its sense of humor. It carries over the Jesse staple of poking fun at characters previously in the cast for tiny things, but it also adds very adult jokes. They actually are extremely adult, like nothing I'd ever want in a kid's show if I was a parent. And potty humor. So yeah, it's basically, and they see a kicky walk and stuff, something like that. I don't care. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm going to have to reanalyze the show, aren't I? Anyway, see you next week.